What's happening everybody, DePoets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. Today's video, I'm getting straight to the point. Flexigraph sent me their fluid that's quite interesting. This is liquid graphene, long story short. It's called their Go Chiller. It's jet black. And the purpose of this video is to see if their claims of it reducing temperatures in a water-cooled system are valid. So when you look up graphene, it says that it has like 10,000 times the thermal conductivity compared to like distilled water uh, or even much better performing than a lot of their competitors that they say. So if you go to their website, you'll actually see like all kinds of charts and stuff showing temperatures being lowered. But when it comes to realistic systems, well, this may be an unrealistic system. This is Scorpius. So this has a 12900K, an RTX 3090 and a 3080. It's DDR5 RAM on the MSI MAG Torpedo EKX motherboard. It's a nice motherboard, a combination between EKWB and MSI, basically making a, a water-cooled motherboard with a monoblock on there. And because of this, there's a lot of uh, heat that it generates. It's a Star Citizen build, so it's meant to play Star Citizen in 4K, have a separate 3080 in the rear over there, uh, just for like additional monitors so that the 3090 has like the maximum capabilities to play Star Citizen in 4K. So when it comes to temperatures, uh, it's a 12900K. So it does run kind of hot. I did undervolt it a little bit and overclocked it at the same time, which is, I'm not sure why Intel is adding so much wattage to these CPUs, but it, you have some wiggle room. But because it is a 12900K, it does run hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a thorough benchmark right now with the fluid that's in the system so I have something to compare. So basically it's a mix between distilled water and um, just some regular fluid by EK, clear fluid. I love EK's clear fluid because it's clear, right? It's not messy. This is gonna be straight black. So over time, yeah, I'm gonna have to like drain the system, clean it out. They say on their website, it's good for a year in a system and that could be very valid. So we're gonna see. But I want to know, are temperatures going to drop, or is this just marketing hoopla? So let's find out. First, let me run some benchmarks on the system. So the first few benchmarks I'm going to run are going to be your average like 3D Mark ones, like uh, Fire Strike Extreme, Time Spy Extreme, Time Spy, Fire Strike, maybe in Port Royal. Other benchmarks I like to run are also Blender Benchmark and Cinebench R23, just common things that everybody can run on their own PCs. Additionally, when you're running comparison benchmarks like this, it's good to have an idea of what the temperature of the room is so you can, you know, kind of measure not just, you know, okay, the CPU is at this temperature and now it's at this temperature, but what was the actual ambient temperature? So that's going to give me a precise calculation. So right now it's, it's 82 degrees. It's LA, right? Uh, but by the time I'm done with all this, it might be colder because it's nighttime. It might drop to 75 degrees or something like that. So I can do a, basically a delta, how much of a range it is based on the ambient temperature of the room. The first benchmark is done. This is just Fire Strike Extreme. We got a score of 24,819. You see the GPU score, that's the 3090. Physics score, combined score. And I can even compare the results online. And it's going to show that this system is better than 99% of all results. So, uh, yeah, it's doing all right. Uh, then, of course, we have the, the temperatures over here. So the CPU, the 12900K, maxed out at 79 degrees Celsius. CPU package, 79 degrees. And then, of course, the GPU, the 3090, maxed out at 47.3 degrees. So this is basically what I'm going to be doing for all the other benchmarks, as well as Blender and Cinebench R23. So I'm going to skip ahead now. Okay, so we finished all the baseline benchmarks with the distilled water slash EK cryofuel mix. And with this, I actually have a whole bunch of like Cinebench R23, Blender Benchmark, uh, 3D Mark applications uh, to give me all the temperatures that I need. And the way I did it, as I said before, was just kind of recording the temperature in the room because temperatures are varying greatly here in LA. Uh, so the next step here is to thoroughly flush the system with just 100% distilled water, drain that and then add the go chiller mix. Let's go. Draining the system is very easy because I actually have a ZMT, zero maintenance tubing drain valve set up right here that wraps around to the back. So it's just as simple as opening up the drain valve and then opening this top up here to relieve any air pressure. The O11 Dynamic Evo makes this nice and simple. So I can just open up the back right here. And then this is my ZMT tubing for the drain valve. I just attach a soft tubing right here open the valve and everything will just pour right out into a bucket. Don't 
It was pretty fun filling this with liquid graphene first time ever doing that and you just have to make sure you have paper towels everywhere because one little drip kind of shows up nice black desk definitely helps so let's go ahead and turn this on there we go so the system's looking good I like the way the fluid looks I'm basically just waiting to get all the air bubbles out so I'm going to tip the system back and forth every now and then uh, the fluid level in the reservoir will drop and as that drops, then I'll add a little bit more of the graphene to make sure that it's all full. And when I'm satisfied that all the air bubbles are out, you can actually kind of hear them. You can hear the air bubbles kind of floating around the system right now. Uh, once that's done, then it will be an even playing field for comparing this fluid, the Gochiller graphene fluid, to the previous uh, distilled water slash EK cryofuel mix that I was using before. So, yeah, it's a waiting game. And then benchmarks, and then I'll give you guys the results and my overall feedback. Okay, we have the interesting conclusion to the Go Chiller. Is it worth it? Does it adhere to the claims? Uh, so, in a way, yes. So, I ran a, a number of benchmarks. So, we have Cinebench R23 single pass, 10 minute pass, uh, Blender benchmark for 3.1.0 and 3.0.1 for uh, the 3090, 3080, and the 12900K. So, that was a lot of runs there. Uh, got Time Spy, Time Spy Extreme, Fire Strike, Fire Strike Extreme, Port Royal. Uh, all of those were ran numerous times, and basically comparing the Go Chiller, this graphene fluid, with the basically distilled water with some of the EK cryofuel in there, the temperatures dropped on average about two and a half to three degrees Celsius. And I'm taking ambient temperatures into account. All right, so the ambient room temperatures were different amongst different runs because it got warmer and then colder in here. That's what happens in LA. Um, but keeping that in mind still able to do the math. And so I saw roughly two and a half to three degrees Celsius drop in temps. So not too bad. You're gonna pay a little bit more to use this fluid uh, to get two to three drop in temps, which, you know, is it worth it for you? Maybe, maybe not. Um, water cooling is an enthusiast art form, I guess. So for many water cooling enthusiasts, 
you may enjoy it. I enjoyed it. I'm happy I'm using it and I was excited to get it. I love the way it does look inside of Scorpius right here. And overall, it's kind of a nice feeling knowing that I have graphene going through this system instead of just, you know, your normal distilled water or, you know, some type of premix. Even this is a premix, but this is definitely something kind of different and special. So, so would I recommend it? It's up to you. Is, is the cost of this and just check out the website worth it, you know, for a two to three degree drop in temp temperatures for you? Uh, for some overclockers, yes. For some gamers, hmm, maybe, depending on your game. Uh, it came from Australia, so I had to go through customs. It took a while and all that stuff. On their website, they do show uh, like a roughly a four degree drop in temperatures based on the system that they used. And I would imagine based on the cooling capacity of a system that you may have, that will determine how effective this actually is. So I do have a big 360 millimeter radiator up here as well as a smaller 360 down here. So I already had a lot of cooling capacity. So I wonder if you had a system with more cooling capacity or less cooling capacity, how much of a difference would this actually make as well? So in this system, two and a half degrees, three degrees Celsius, that's respectable. So that's about it. So if you like this type of video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it and all that good stuff. And uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section. So I will see you guys later. Peace. Oh, and by the way, I don't think you're going to reuse these bottles after using this graphene fluid. Yeah, this is, this is staining. Ha <laughs> ha.